Welcome to Success Talks with Rodney Salisbury. I hope you will support my sponsors who bring you this podcast absolutely free and with limited interruptions. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. I'll get started in just a second. The reviews are in. The latest book from voiceover superstar and coach Rodney Salisbury is another runaway hit. Readers from all over the world are raving about his newest title, Tongue Twisters and Vocal Warm-Ups. You can find this and his other titles at the top of the voiceover bestsellers list on Amazon.com. Mary Wilson, born in Greenville, Mississippi. Wilson moved around frequently during her childhood before finally landing in the rough-and-tumble Brewster Douglas Projects of Detroit, Michigan. It was in Brewster Douglas grade school where Mary Wilson first met Florence Ballard, another girl who loved to sing. The two friends made a pact never to forget each other if either someday got a chance to make it big. As Wilson later remembered, I used to listen to rock and roll and I just loved it. Frankie Lyman and the teenagers were my favorite group and I was in the eighth grade when I joined the school talent show and I did one of their songs. That was the very first time, and I just fell in love with it. Then I met Florence, and she told me about this group that they were going to start, and would I like to be in it? And that's what got me into doing this. And we'll be back after this message. Hello, everyone. This is Sean Daly for DailyVO.com. I want to tell you about one resource I highly recommend for vocal warm-ups because it takes out all of the guesswork, and it was purpose-built with voiceover in mind. It's called Rodney Salisbury's Tongue Twisters and Vocal Warm-Ups with Other Vocal Care Tips. How's that for a title? So in case you don't know, Rodney Salisbury is a top-tier talent and coach, motivational speaker, and author of several books on voice acting, including You Can Bank on Your Voice and Step Up to the Mic. The book is available in print and on Kindle, and you can find it at Amazon or Rodney's personal website, rodneysalisbury.com, in the store section. In 1959, when she was just 15 years old, she was discovered by manager Milton Jenkins, who picked her to lead a new group called the Primettes, an all-female answer to his popular male doo-wop group, the Primes. Making good on their childhood promise, Wilson brought Ballard into the group. Ballard, in turn, recruited her friend, Diana Ross. In 1961, the Primettes caught the eye of Motown Records president, Barry Gordy. Gordy told the girls they had to finish high school before he would sign them to a record contract. And when he finally did agree to sign them, they had to change the name of the group. In 1961, Mary Wilson and her friends signed with Motown, becoming at Florence Ballard's suggestion, the Supremes. And though Diana Ross would later become the group's breakout star, Mary Wilson was the Supremes' original anchor. Backed by Gordy's seemingly unstoppable Motown hit machine, the Supremes eventually began cranking out number one singles at a rate that rivaled the likes of the Beatles and Elvis Presley. But let me tell you about this success. It didn't come overnight. In fact, the Motown executives sarcastically called them the no-hit Supremes. But as time went on, over the next several years, they turned out a ton of hits, including Baby Love, Come See About Me, and Stop in the Name of Love. Throughout the 1960s heyday of the Motown era, the Supremes dominated radio play and the billboard charts, becoming one of America's most beloved musical acts. One of my favorite songs is Where Did Our Love Go? And I gotta tell you, the backgrounds really dominate that song. Even though Diana Ross is singing lead, when you hear Florence Ballard and Mary Wilson singing, Baby, 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 Where Did Our Love Go? It sticks out, and it's the highlight of the song. But internal tensions were threatening to tear the trio apart. Under Gordy's guidance, the Supremes had evolved from a group of equals into an act featuring Diana Ross as the lead singer. With Ballard and Wilson regulated to backup vocals eventually, Ballard could not take it anymore. Citing depression and health problems, she quit the group in 1967. Now, some sources say she left willingly, while others suggest she was forced out after clashing with Ross. And we'll be back after this message. Has anyone ever said to you that you have a nice voice and you should get into voiceovers? Well, this is your chance to find out how to do that online in Rodney Salisbury's voiceover online seminar for beginners only. You can find out what it takes to be a voiceover artist. And here's the beauty of this 
this online seminar. You don't have to be there. When you register, you will automatically get a copy of the seminar. Go to my website at rodneysalsbury.com and sign up today. In the 1970s, Mary Wilson once again became the group's key member. The only steady presence in a trio that frequently shuffled in new singers to fill the other two spots of what became known as the New Supremes. The only surviving link to the original Supremes, Wilson took on a more prominent role. But the new trio could never match the success of the original lineup. In 1972, the Supremes had their last hit with Floyd Joy, a Smokey Robinson production. In 1998, the Supremes were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame forever cementing their place in music history. In 1992, Mary Wilson released a final solo album, Walk the Line, which won critical acclaim. In the 1990s and 2000s, Wilson shifted her focus to her humanitarian efforts. Her lecture series, Dare to Dream, has inspired thousands of young people to pursue their goals. Mary has become an advocate for women's health in developing nations and raised thousands of dollars for AIDS and HIV awareness. In 2003, she was named by U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell to serve as one of nine goodwill ambassadors to the world. Mary Wilson is an author, too. In 1980, she released her memoir, Dream Girl, My Life as a Supreme. It had a huge reception and a long-running bestseller status. And today, she is singing as a solo act around the world, working on more books, and also getting into voiceovers. And we at Success Talks are proud to celebrate the outstanding career of the original dream girl and supreme, Mary Wilson. You can listen to any of Rodney's podcasts at any time. Go to RodneySalsbury.com. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and I urge you to listen to future podcasts, where I will continue to try and make you better than before. My goal is to point you in a positive direction to success, right here on Success Talks with me, Rodney Salisbury. Change my way.